Welcome everyone to Story Trading Weekly VIP Meetup. We got three tickers to talk about tonight. So let's get started. First, a quick disclaimer. Story Trading is not an investment advisor and investing in securities involves significant risk of loss. This event is being recorded. It'll be provided to our VIP members uh, for a few days before we put it up on social media. Uh, for those of you not familiar, what's in a story trade? Story trading is a practice of understanding market pricing through the lens of the four pillars of fundamentals, catalyst, sentiment, and technicals. We have an app coming up. Well, first of all, right now we collaborate on WhatsApp and on Zoom in our VIP community. We have an app in private beta right now, which is the place to discover, collaborate, and validate market moving information. So make sure to sign up for that wait list at storytrading.com. Uh, our VIP picks, you can track them online. There's a ton of income and ideas coming into our community. So we've had to create a new process to vet those VIP ideas. Great. And now I'm going to turn it over to Jared, my co-host, to introduce uh, the new member to, of our community here and introduce the stock here. Okay. Um, one second. So, hi, uh, I'm Jared. Uh, Keith, uh, who is uh, outside of the community, um, suggested City Trends, which is our, our new VIP pick. Um, and this is a really interesting company because, uh, for a lot of reasons that Keith's going to mention, but, um, I don't want to, I don't want to preempt what he says, but there's a lot of reasons to think that this company is going to do well. It's in a really great sector. It has a, a pretty decent chart and, uh, it has a very, very high short position. So yeah, I think that, uh, there is the possibility that the stock can do well. I also think, and I'll, I'll chime in later after James is finished. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I'll, I'll type. I'll chime in later after Keith is finished um, with some possible option strategies that could potentially make this trade even juicier. Okay, great. So Keith, let me give you some rights over here so you can unmute yourself and. Keith, you there? Yeah, I'm here. <laughs> Can you hear me? Right. Yeah, I hear you. Um, so there's a chart. Did you uh, did you want to share your screen, or did you have a presentation for us, or just talk it through? I do have a presentation. All right, um, great. Yeah, so you can share your screen anytime. We're hoping to hear something about sentiment catalysts, fundamentals, and technicals to help us understand the history of this chart and where it might go from here. So, uh, yep, go ahead. Everybody see it okay? Uh, yeah, I see it. Okay, so uh, this is City Trends. Uh, it's a retail stores. They have about almost 600 stores uh, in 33 states. Uh, they uh, are focused on kind of the urban scene. So they do fashion, they do home decor, accessories. Um, and their main demographic target is uh, African-American female and Latina demographics. So there are, it's also more of a, more of a entry level retail store. So it's not, it's not high end. It's more, more kind of your value shopping um, clientele. So it's, it's not competing against um, Sex Fifth Avenue or anything like that. It's, it's kind of your, it's kind of your, your lower level spending wise. Um, and I think, one thing that you see that City Trends has that's going to be a great benefit is two different parts of their demographics. One is the demographics that they target are both growing and population wise. So you see African American um, and then Hispanic growth as the lead, two of those leading um, pieces in, in the total growth story of the US. Um, and also, they are both two of the leading um, retail spenders. So when you look at the four main groups that are uh, that are having the largest increase in retail spending, it's African Americans, it's Hispanics, it's Asian Americans, and it's also Native Americans. So this is a uh, city trend is kind of in that is in that growth sector of a. Uh, of, uh, demographics that you're seeing the largest increases both in the number of shoppers and how much they're spending. So they're, they're, they're in a very, uh, a very niche area that 
when you look at retail overall, you're seeing a pretty significant increase in, in what their target audience is, is, has become. So uh, next point is kind of looking at how they're doing fundamentally on the financial side. So one note is in 2020, um, they closed uh, almost all of their stores because of COVID-19. So when we look at comparing their uh, financial statements, it compares to 2019 versus 2021. So that's why you're not seeing any 2020 because there really was, was nothing there because they had, they had gone on hiatus uh, for COVID-19. So when we look at total sales uh, between Q2 2019 and Q2 2021, uh, 237 million increase of 29%, almost 30%. Uh, comparable store sales increased 25% uh, versus 2019, which is really amazing for any retail. You know, in in most quarters, if a uh, if a retail can get you know 3% same stores increase, they're pretty happy with that. So when you say there's something like 25%, it it really it really jumps out. Uh, gross margin, 40, uh, almost 41%. So uh, that's a that's a uh, pretty high level of margin um, that you're seeing um, City Trends be able to do, which is not exactly something you would expect in, in a retail store. Um, so we go to earnings with dilute share, uh, 136 compared to three cents. So a, a huge uh, increase in there. Um, and then operating income, 55 million compared to 8.9 million. I know Jared and I kind of talked about this earlier. It's like, well, he asked the question, what, why is the stock, you know, seeing such a significant increase um, over the past couple of years? And I think one of the big pieces of that is seeing that its operating income uh, increased more than five times. So um, it is a uh, is a definitely a, a large um, increase across all its financial metrics. Its sales, its uh, earnings per share, operating income, um, its growth over uh, comparable same store sales. So it's really hitting on all pieces. Uh, and uh, when they did their uh, most recent call in August, they went ahead and um, guided higher for their revenue and for their EPS. So um, they were. Uh, not, it wasn't just a, a one quarter story that they were talking about. They were expecting for it to uh, the story to continue throughout um, 2021, and it'll be uh, interesting to hear how they talk about going into next year. But looks like everything is, as far as the full year, is is looking really good. Uh, the next piece is their capital returns. So uh, City Trends is about 8.7 million share float. Uh, and one of the really exciting things that they've been doing is in, in the first quarter of 2021, they repurchased 750,000 shares at a cost of 64.4 million. Um, so I think that's about 8% of their, their float they already got and re, repurchased um, in their share count. They also, uh, on their latest call, authorized an additional 30 million share repurchase on top of a uh, remaining 20.9 million. So they they have authorized an additional $51 million in share buybacks. So it seems that they've been um, taking a lot of their, their free cash flow and purchasing it uh, right back into to taking um, stock out of the float. So um, if they do another 50, you know, 51 million share, uh, $51 million free purchase, you could see another, you know, six to $700,000 shares come out. So that's pretty, pretty exciting that they are, they seem to be, um, buying their shares hand, hand over fist as much as they can. So um, it sounds like they see that the stock price is, is still very, very manageable to them and has not stopped uh, their wanting to continue to repurchase of their shares. Uh, this is kind of their chart. So uh, I'm not really a, a chartist, but um, I believe the term is a full flag that it possibly looks like that it is breaking out of. And this is over kind of a, a five month uh, chart. So uh, we've kind of seen 
um, recently a move up to where it's breaking out of kind of that flag. So that that's a that's nice looking um, kind of analysis to uh, to check out that um, we may see the break and then it, see if it can continue uh, past its all time highs and maybe even farther uh, beyond that. So technically speaking, looking very good on that part. Short interest, uh, almost 25% uh, of the of the uh, the stock is stock shares are shorted. Um, I'm not really sure 100%. I know Jared had some thoughts on on what have caused this, but um, I think to me, I would definitely not be short this. Uh, I think that this could uh, really come back to uh, to buy people because. From my experience, I see a lot of shorting in, in companies that just aren't producing or, you know, had bad revenue or they're not earning anything and it's all hype. But uh, with City Trends, it's it's a company that is sort of is really hitting on all cylinders. So I think that could put those shorts in jeopardy um, if you could if we see a move um, higher um, in the coming time frame. And just kind of go, go over a summary. So it's growing customer demographic, both size and spending power. Uh, for its uh, huge growth in both revenue and EPS in 2021. It guided higher for the full 2021, has a great uh, share repurchase program, uh, possibly coming out of five month bull flag um, in the last few weeks, and has a very high short interest. So I think you're seeing kind of, I know talking about, Ben has mentioned all the pillars, and I think you're hitting all the pillars here. I think this is a um, kind of a um, both short term and long term could really produce nice gains and if it continues on the trajectory that is going. Great. Um, thank you, Keith. Nice presentation. Um, <clears throat> I want to go back to that short position and I'll bring you into this soon, Jared, as well. But what are, what are some of your thoughts, Keith, on why the high short position? And I believe I checked it out. I'm going to pull it up now again. Um, and I don't think it's been decreasing. I think it's been increasing. Um, I'm going to pull that up for everyone and put it on the screen. Uh, while I do that, what are, what are your thoughts on why that's happening? The only thing I can think of is, is you, had, you had COVID-19 in 2020, and then you had the Delta variant. You know, come back in 2021. So uh, maybe people were sort of thinking lockdowns um, that it was, you know, just they didn't they didn't believe that there was a retail recovery that you're still going to run into, you know, just some headwinds with people, you know, still wanting to buy online, not wanting to go to a store, um, et cetera. So I, to me, I think it's it has probably impact of the lingering um, impact of COVID-19 both you know, physiologically and, and, uh, and, psych and psychological as well. So you bring up a good point regarding COVID-19. Um, is it possible the shorts are thinking that the buying power of the STEMIC graphic was, was temporarily lifted because of COVID payment benefits and unemployment benefits that have now run dry? Yeah, I could have seen, you know, that, you know, from Capitol Hill with the with the uh, push to uh, to get funding out to people, um, and so people had been you know kind of not going into stores, so they you know had funds, and then they get additional funds, so they go out and buy, and then you know maybe that's an initial pop, and then things return to normal, and you don't see the growth drivers. Um, you just sort of kind of goes back to just kind of plodding along. Now, on the other hand, I've seen, um, I haven't researched this as much as you, but just looking through my newsfeed, I've seen a bunch of price target increases by several analysts. Is, isn't that correct? Like much higher too, like in the like 150 to 175 range. Do I have Yeah, I think right? I've seen 115 to, to 150 plus um, price Right, So that's, that. that's unusual because I usually think of the the people who are shorting as the institutions, yet you have several institutions with Price targets, you know, 50 to even more, 50, 70% higher than here. So um, seems interesting. I, I don't know what to make of that. But let, let me also add my last comment before we bring Jared in is uh, maybe with inflation fears, 
you know, kind of like discount stores will benefit from that actually. Um, so I don't know if there are any other thoughts you want to add between, you know, this short position and the institutions and the discount stores. I'll let you have one more comment on that and then we'll bring Jared in. Uh, yeah, I, I mean, I could, I think that you're going to see, see not only inflation has gone up, but I think you, we have started to see wages go up, especially kind of a, in this demographic. So, you know, when you're looking at, you know, people getting paid more, you know, $15 minimum wage getting spread across more across the country. And I think you're seeing kind of this demographic mm. with an increase in buying power mm. um, just from the, you know, kind of post COVID world that we're in that, you know, I think people are, are being able to, uh, to expect more of their salary and therefore are, are getting it and spending it. Well, that's interesting. Yeah. Cool. Uh, I might chime in again. I'm interested in this, but Jared, uh, go ahead with your thoughts. Okay, so on the short squeeze, uh, there were a couple of ideas. Uh, one is, okay, well, the share price has gone up 4x since 2019. Is that justified? And I think it is because the EPS over trailing 12 months has gone up by five times. So yes, the business definitely deserves that higher multiple and they've bought back shares and they're growing and, and everything. So so that's good. Um, the, the, other, the other question is the sort of broader question of, you know, has the business gone up because it's catering specifically to African Americans, and is you know is that sentiment um, justified? There was another stock of another company called Carver Bancorp, and that stock went from a one dollar stock to a twenty dollar stock mm -hmm. in the span of a couple of weeks um, during the Black Lives Matter protests last summer, and that subsequently became like the most shorted stock in the market. Um, and I think it was pretty unjustified to assume that this small bank, which marketed to ha African Americans, would have a two, you know, a two thousand percent run up. That that seemed unjustified, and so shorting it made sense. It's and it did give up a lot of those gains since then. So it's possible that some of the people that thought that shorting Carver Bancorp was a good idea looked at this, which is another business which has both marketed heavily to African-Americans and has gone up a lot. And they think, oh, shorting this could make sense too. But the difference is that Carver Bancorp didn't actually have any news that propelled it during its run. The catalyst was that the Black Lives Matter protests were happening. In this case, the actual news is that the EPS numbers have gone up by, you know, by 5x. And as you can see from the chart, it's been a nice, slow, steady rise over several months. So it doesn't seem like there are any, there's any real short thesis that's justified, which means that shorts will have to cover. And the other thing is that this is something where I think we could be super confident short term. And that's because every single one of the low end clothing stores that I have looked at have beaten expectations. Uh, for their Q3 reports, every single one. And this report is coming up November 30th. So because all of the other ones have beaten expectations, it makes sense that this one will also beat expectations. And and uh, I understand though, maybe there was, they had big run-ups into their earnings and then it was a sell the news. I think you mentioned to me on some of those other ones. Well, something interesting happened. So on Thursday of last week, Kohl's and Macy's um, had very strong earnings reports uh, beat expectations and ran up a lot. And then on Friday, Coles and Macy subsequently oh, gave wow. some of that news back. And um, there was a couple of things that were going on. First, it might, it, it might, there might be sell the news going on. And then the second thing that happened was that there was news that COVID was getting bad in Europe and that Austria was deciding to do like another lockdown or something like that. And that may have spooked some people in the, um, in the retail sector. Um, in my opinion, there's a zero political will for any form of lockdowns in the United States. I just don't think it's going to happen, even if COVID gets bad again. Um, I've been to stores. Stores are typically packed in my area. There's no, in many cases, it's impossible to even find parking. I just don't think people are going to stop shopping. I just don't. And so, yeah, I, I don't, I don't view that as a long-term problem. I think that if city trends sold off either because of the uh, Austria situation or because it was, you know, sort of selling off in sympathy with Macy's and Kohl's, 
selling off their earnings reports, good news. I don't think that that overall really detracts from the chart. Yeah, I don't really like to go too much in detail on the charts in terms of a day-by-day -day thing, but I think it's it's relevant to say that as, as sad as that sell-off was, it didn't even wipe out the past two days of gains. Like, like it, it closed above where it opened two days ago, right? So yeah, I, I, th I still oh, well. think it's, it's pretty clearly in the uptrend. Yeah, I wish I heard about this stock earlier, um, but the fundamentals are compelling. You know, as you said, what the earnings are up five times, but the stock's only up four times, something yes, like that. Yes, that is correct. Very compelling earnings <laughs> and compelling short positions. So even though I'm really late, I'm very interested. Yep. There's a comment from Bart here. That uh, I think it was touched upon as well by by Keith, but strong rise in lower end wages now, plus strong hiring environment should be pluses. Yes. A good question from John. What about supply chain concerns? Because this is a this is something impacting a lot of businesses going into the holiday season. Keith, did he have a, a chance to understand how the management is navigating supply chain concerns? I didn't really see any any comments on that specific piece. Well, I, I think they um, they mentioned either in the um, investor day presentation they did in September or in the Q2 report. I don't forget which, but somebody asked about that, and they said that they don't anticipate having a problem because they did they have started to do buying early in anticipation that there might be a problem in the future. So I don't think that that there is going to be a significant problem for them. Awesome. Well, I I really like this company. I really like the chart. Um, I, I, I have a bias here that I think the shorts just might be wrong. I, th yeah. I would think to me that the strongest short thesis I would think is that the unemployment benefits are done and the COVID benefits are done. So, you know, revenue will start going down here. Um, that's my gut. Yeah. I, I, I don't know. I haven't talked to any shorts. I, that's part of what I like to do. When I do social sentiment research, I'll, I'll go in and look at the commentary on all of the uh, Twitter and stock twits and everywhere else. And I'll even try to talk to people privately who are short. Um, but I haven't had time to do that. If anyone does, that'll be fascinating. But to me, that's the most compelling short argument. And I, and I don't know, you know if it's true or not, but you know, a lot of other benefits here, I think that you know, I, I, I think I'm biased towards the, the long side here on this one. Yeah, and uh, there's some interesting option strategies available as well. So, for example, one strategy that I did was I did a call debit spread expiring December, and that is buying the $90 call and selling the $95 call. As of right now, the price of that option spread is $2.10. That means that if the stock uh, ends in December, 17th at $95 or higher, which again, it was just, you know, yesterday and the day before, that is a 138% return. So you, you have, you have a gain of 138%, assuming that the stock can go up essentially like three and a half percent between now and December. And I think that given that there is a report that we have every reason to believe is good, it seems like a potentially fun strategy. That is. I'm, I'm trying to learn more about your option strategies. But the downside, though, is if it closes, this is a great strategy for uh, a situation where you think that the downside is extremely limited, you know, or almost impossible, right? There's good news. You don't know how much it's going to go up. You can't time exactly when it's going to inflect with a big move up. So anything with small gains, right? You could end up making a big amount of money, but correct me if I'm wrong. If it closes below 90, you, you lose your investment, right? Yeah, you lose. You would lose the whole thing in that case. So one way of thinking about it is it's kind of like a coin flip. If you had a coin flip that paid you off, you know, if it paid you off a dollar every time you won and you lost a dollar every time it came out wrong, you, the expected value of that would be zero. But in this case, you're getting a dollar and 38 cents if you're right and zero if you're wrong. And, you know, you have every reason to believe that the odds of being correct are higher than 50% because, again, all these other clothing companies had these great Q3s and went up. So, yeah, it's possible that you'll be wrong. I would never advise anyone to put, you know, more money than they can afford to lose into an option play. But if you're looking to kind of take on a tiny bit of risk, um, this certainly seems 
a like it has a asymmetric risk reward element to it. Cool. Thank you. Thank you for that, Jared. Uh, thank you, Keith, for this uh, idea you submitted. Um, we'll be tracking this as a VIP pick. And again, we we just opened up the uh, CCRN research group. So uh, I don't know if my is my screen still sharing. I uh, know it is not. Oh, it's not. All right. Well, let me get my screen sharing over here. So yeah, we put the link to that CTRN research group in the VIP room. So you can find that there. And Keith, hope to hope for you to join us in the CTRN research group where we'll collaborate on this in the coming days and weeks. So thank you very much for that. Guys, everyone hang on. We're about to start our Trade of the Week uh, session. Um, we have lots of events. We finally updated our calendar. So that was fun. We did that Friday. Thank you, Jared, for your help on that. You'll see we have lots of events going on. We have some free events. We have paid events. We have, uh, Twitter Spaces is awesome. We do three Twitter Spaces every week now, uh, 8 p.m. on Sundays, 4 p.m. on Mondays, and Wednesdays at 8 p.m. My favorites are the Wednesday 8 p.m.s, which is about the uh, philosophical ideas behind story trading. Um, those events are recorded. They're available on our YouTube. So Definitely go to, over to youtube.com slash story trading and you can see all those great videos. Make sure to subscribe to story trading at YouTube. It's free. It's just one click. It helps us grow our community and grow our voice. You'll want to do that. And you can follow us on Twitter at twitter.com slash story trading. So again, thank you, everybody. We're going to end the recording and move over to our trade of the week show. Thanks.